Stephen Wayne at Comics and Mohegan Sun, hanging with the one and only Tom Arnold. Hey, Thank buddy. you very, very much for doing this. What a journey. Minutes, I man. was looking forward to this so much today as I traveled from L.A. Mm-hmm. I said, I can't wait to sit down with my buddy <laughs> and uh, do that be- right before the show, too. <laughs> you know, after having the first flight canceled and then, you know, just getting here, barely getting here. But I had enough time to take a shower because I do. I'd be sitting next to you. Listen, you know I love. I'm LAX. sweating already. I love LAX. I can walk around oh, there all day. Oh, it's the worst. Day, bro. It is a pit. Oh, come on, it's great. It is the worst. It's but, a potpourri of people. But uh, I got to visit Atlanta today, which was unexpected, mm-hmm. which I love. And then I got to get here, and then there was snow here. Mm-hmm. And apparently, you guys yeah. don't know how to drive in the snow. It was crazy. Yeah, they don't know. That's yeah, why we're like all trying to get out. It's when it rains in LA. But anyway, it's wonderful here. It's beautiful. Well, we're glad that you stopped by, and we're glad that you this stopped place by is beautiful for sure. This is beautiful. Mohegan Sun is one of our stomping grounds. A lot of shows here, a lot of entertainment here, right? And now comics is here, so it's it's really good. We love coming out here. Yeah, I'm glad you do. Now let's talk about Tom Arnold. Oh my gosh! Listen, you 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 like cover everything, bro. What what haven't you done? You've done movies. You've done now. You're doing comedy. Well, here's the thing. If I could do one thing, like I, I saw George Clooney recently at a party, and he introduced his wife to uh, me and my wife, and and he said, "Oh my God, Tom and I started together in 1988, uh, the first year of Roseanne, and we're can you believe we're still doing it together? The same." And I was like, "Not the same. We are doing it the same. We're still doing it, but you're doing it different. Like you know, you're a huge movie star, but I but in his mind, it is the same, but." It's not the same. Believe me, if I could be a huge movie star, I would just be a huge movie star. But right. I have to do stand-up, write. I've sold a couple of pilots. I, I do personal appearances. I do it all. I, right. I act in movies and TV and uh, going back to NCIS uh, uh, New Orleans next week. And Yeah, i got to keep juggling because I'm a 57-year-old man with a 3-year-old and a 10-month-old <laughs> kid. So figure that out, man. <laughs> So what draws you to comedy? Stand-up well, that comedy. that I get to, you know, for one thing, stand-up comedy is what I started doing in 1982. I mean, I worked at a meatpacking plant for three years after high school at Hormel to save enough money to go to the University of Iowa so I could work for my uncle's stockbroking firm. That's mm-hmm. all. And the second someone offered me $15 to do stand-up comedy for a weekend, I quit college. Right. After working in a meatpacking plant for three years to mm-hmm. save the money. It was a stupid, crazy decision. But uh, And if my son said he was going to do that, I would you know, put him in a headlock. <laughs> but uh, it's something I've always loved, and, you know, that I got cut up in it. And, you know, what's also nice is, you know, two things happen. You get an introduction, this fantastic introduction about all the movies you've done, all the things you've done, and then you spend the next hour destroying that, right. you know, making fun of yourself. <laughs> and, uh, and you could go, if the audience knows at the end of your journey, because I tell real personal stuff, that it turns out okay, mm-hmm. you know, then you go pretty dark, on right. your from the many mistakes you've made, and right. you can be pretty honest about your screw ups, right. and uh, and they'll go along with you because the audience ultimately they're rooting for you. Yep. You know they don't want to come here and be all bump. You know, right. like it ends terrible. Right. You know, so you know they want to know that you're not a jerk, that you don't you're not there making banging on your ex wives. So, you know that's not what you do, and that you're you know that the things are okay, and so yeah, that you're a little different than other people, and it's, uh, that you're glad they came. Well, we're glad that you. Came to comics. Your favorite Schwarzenegger movie? Uh, my favorite. You know, I I I'm so, uh, selfish, but I love the True Lies is my favorite because he was not only the hero, but he was a flawed hero, mm-hmm. and the second guy got to make fun of the hero, and mm-hmm. that never happens in a movie where the hero, because he was a hero in every other movie, right. or the Terminator, even the bad guys, he was a hero, right. and so True Lies was funny because the the A guy screwed up and the B guy got to say hey you're oh my god you're just like me exactly right. like me you're screw up right. just like me and got to stay on him about it and right. that you don't see that and Arnold played off of really well nice played the vulnerable thing so I like it but you know I love the freaking Terminator movies too right, right. <laughs> comedian that inspired you oh my gosh well Richard Pryor you know uh, when I got to meet him in the 80s I was breathless uh, there's so many guys that inspired me though you know and, and so many people I got to meet you know, uh, George Carlin and so many, I'd mean, I be mean, leaving people out. You know, Jackie Gleason was a big inspiration. Smoking he was a comic a actor, yeah. But I mean, it, just from the Honeymooners. Right. As a comic actor, as a vulnerable big guy, as just a timing, that just what he did at the Jackie Gleason show. And Favorite band? Favorite band uh, ever. Ever? Ever. Jeez Louise. Well, you know, Prince was pretty great. Mm-hmm. Uh you know, he's somebody I got to know because I lived in Minneapolis five years in the 80s, which was when you wanted to live in Minneapolis. Me- and last but not least, all right, you ready for this one? Yeah. 
Cubs or the Indians? I can't. I have a lifelong Cubs fan. I am not going to jinx the Cubs. Uh, that's my book this weekend. I could have. Uh, there's no way I was blocking out the the World Series in advance of the Cubs making it. There's no way. Now, I could go to Game Five on Sunday. <laughs> Absolutely, hundred percent. And I would have paid more attention at the All Star Game, which I known if it was so important because uh, we would have played the first two in Chicago, and I could have went to those, uh, and then the last two. But you know what? Uh, it would be wonderful if the Cubs won. I guess it would be okay if the, the Indians won. It's okay either way. Cubs. But I knew you were a big Cubbies man. Huge, so, huge. So I knew so, I, had to, I had to get that in there at some certain point. It would mean a lot. It would be mean a lot to be in a lot of people. And all right, really man. Thank it. you, buddy. Tom Arnold, Comics, oh. and Mohegan Sun. Oh, by the way, you're here all weekend. I am. Okay, how many shows? I don't know. One tonight, one tomorrow, which is Friday, and then two on Saturday. Beautiful. Well, thank you very yeah. much for taking some time to sit with us. All right, man. Comics, Mohegan Sun. Does this count as my show? Tom Arnold. Okay. Yeah, sure, why performed. not? Okay. It's iRock Radio, your world headquarters of rock.